To address the doors, I'm going to add a few more space markup elements into this door storage area. Let's just zoom in a little bit. Double click on it so that I can draw directly. I'm going to call that area space door storage should also not be visible and the, lo the locations layout can actually be random so as the doors arrive it will be scattered randomly into that area I want to add let's make it a regular area space Assembly. And that should be good. No. Similar to the source bodies, I now want to add some logic that will let my doors arrive and it will also queue in this door storage area before it goes to the assembly unit. We haven't modeled the assembly unit yet. I go to my process modeling library, I add another source. This one is called source doors and it automatically added that link, which I don't want. Oops, come on. I add another queue, which I will call simply doors. There's no conveyor from where the doors should go to the assembly unit, so it will go directly to the assembly machine. So the doors are delivered right next to the assembly line. <coughs> Let's just add the assembler block at this stage. In the process modeling library, there is an assembler block, which I'm going to add after the conveyor. Now the assembler block has built in little queues and you can specify from where the entity should arrive. And you can also per line in specify what the number of um, units are of that particular component that must be assembled. I'm going to leave the name default. It's quite descriptive. We are working in an assembly line so let's just call it assembler just move that name out it should take one body the quantity on line in should be one it should take one door on line in and we can actually set what entity types it should assemble currently they are all default so the first one is an agent that is the type of entity that will go out of the assembly unit and then the next one is associated with the first input, second input, third input, etc. What type of entity should be created? We will leave a default for now. It should seize resources. Indeed, we've got an assembling machine. We haven't created that one yet, so we need to set the resource sets. But the delay time, we can, let's say, change to a triangular distribution between five with minimum five mode 10 and a maximum of 15 seconds so it's randomly distributed following a triangular distribution but that is just the value is it seconds is it minutes to do that we multiply with second so now we know that it will be five seconds or 10 seconds or a maximum of 15 seconds The entity location, where should the entities actually appear? Let's put the entities while they are actually um, being worked on or being assembled. Let's put them randomly inside the space markup element. So there you see it, space at assembly. We can actually specify unique 
locations for each one of the incoming um, queues. We're not going to change the task priorities or preemption. Currently, we're not going to address any of the advanced portions or any of the actions right now. But you can specify what should happen when an entity arrives at the first queue, the second queue, or when it actually enters the delay, um, when it's at the exit or when it actually leaves the logical block. We just need to connect our doors to the second port of the assembler. For that, I double click on the out port. And it is connected. I have to make sure that the assembler has something downstream. We're not going to do anything with the units once they are assembled. So we just put in a sync for now. Leave the name default sync. And I now need to just provide the a description of the resources that will be required and for that I'm going to use a resource pool which is also available in my process modeling library I simply drag it over to my model space and I'm going to call this assembly machine it is of type agent in terms of each one of those resources the type can either be moving static or portable moving might be like people moving around static is what we're after in terms of of a machine and portable might be something like a trolley that you can carry around the capacity how many of these uh, units are there available in this resource pool let's make it 10. The new resource will always be of default type and the home location or we can just put them at at the assembly as well you have the option to set when they break or fail um, or th when they take breaks when they fail or repair uh, if there's a maintenance schedule and if there are custom tasks that you want to assign with it, we're not going to set that right now, but you can read up, uh, read up about those in the reference guide. You can also have custom actions or functions being executed, uh, which we will not set at this point. Go back to the assembler block, because we just need to tell it to use those resources in the assembly machine. So in the resource set, if we click, uh, if we add one, it picks up that there is assembly machine. And it also asks you how many of those resources in the resource pool should it seize um, every time that it wants to do an assembly. And at this point, we need one of those assembly units in the resource pool to actually perform one uh, assembly. It might be possible to model something like I need one machine, I need two workers and I need one crane to actually perform a particular task and the task can only be executed once all those resources are actually available simultaneously. And now we should be able to have a model which we can just save, if we click on play, should open up our simulation window where we click run and you see the smart is appearing in the body storage area moving along the conveyor those dots are the 10 resources that are currently available because they too are modeled as generic agents what I'm missing is the doors appearing in the storage area so let's let us just fix that quickly stop the model close it in the doors queue that we've created we haven't told the model where to put those entities so we click on the drop down box and we want to specify space door storage it is somewhat confusing because the assembly machine can work on 10 units so it has a capacity of 10 units but it's not really 10 separate machines so I want to see if we can switch off the default animation. 
Et depuis celui-là. It is not in the assembling unit. It is actually the resources for which we've set the home location. And I'm going to remove the default animations. Save the model. Let's run it and see if it makes more sense. And now we actually see the doors appearing. So we fixed the one little issue and the dots of the machine does not appear in that markup space anymore. But now you can see that markup space, uh, space markup is still visible. As the first entities arrive, they will appear somewhere in that area. And as bodies are added, doors are added as well. And that is where they are being assembled. What we don't see is once they're created and they actually move downstream. This concludes the first part of building your small factory.